Hi, I'm Adrian Schneer, Advancement Coach and Strategist, Lawyer and Professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot Podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. Hi, and welcome to the Advancement Spot Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Schneer, and I'm so excited that you have joined us here today. Today on the podcast, we have Anita Rombo, who is a personal results and success coach that helps high achievers balancing multiple priorities amplify their fulfillment, time, and success so that they can break through to their next level. But that's not all you are, and that's not all that you've done. You've done so much more than that. And I really want to dive into your journey and everything that has come with it. And so I'm going to let you do a little bit of a more fulsome introduction. So welcome, Anita. Thank you, Adrienne. I really appreciate this opportunity. Yeah, of course. I'm so happy to have you. So tell me, how did you get to this place? Walk me through a little bit of your journey. Sure. So I have to say, first and foremost, that this journey was completely unplanned. So if there are any people out there that love a solid plan or a structure or, you know, just I just want to let everyone know that my journey did not follow that path. And your journey may not either. That was one of the big learnings that I took away. And, and I hope to like to share with you today. So essentially, from a very young age where people were maybe thinking about what they what, who they wanted to go with on a dance, to a dance or, you know, what they're going to wear. I was always consumed with what was I going to be when I grew up. It was just never a clear cut decision for me. I liked a lot of different things. I consider myself a textbook, high achiever, a lifelong learner, multi-passionate. And that's really what inspires my vision in my work today, because I felt like I wasn't able to find my path and I kind of came across it happenstance. But what I did realize throughout my throughout my journey, which entailed, I don't know, three university degrees, a couple of designations, lots of designations actually, and 20 years of experience was while I was successful on the outside, while I was on getting Dean's honors list, you know, class president for my for my classes, really pivoting and making some big moves and like working my way up no matter where I was, the success was guaranteed. But what was missing was that feeling of inner peace and happiness. And so what I really realized that the key thing from my journey that I want to share with everybody is how important it is to really listen to that inner voice, that inner calling. You know, we all have impact to make and big impact to make. And it's great to to feel really driven and goal oriented, but sometimes it's easy to get lost in that path and lose yourself as well in the process. Mm -hmm. Thank you for all of that. There's so much there. You might have seen that I was like scribbling things down because I was going, oh, I want to touch on this. And oh, I want to touch on that. So let's just jump into it because there's so much to unpack here. I think that I can certainly relate to some of the things that you're saying. I know that our listeners can relate to some of the things that you're saying. And so I want to like pull a few of those things out and really dive into them a little bit. So the first thing is that what you said was, you know, my my journey has been one of that has been winding. It has not been a straight path. And even when success might have been guaranteed, I didn't feel in alignment with with the direction that I was going in or the choices that I was making in that on that journey, on that path. And so you said, you know, you sort of came upon what you're doing now as, you know, in in happenstance, in in sort of a way that you never anticipated that sort of like maybe shook you to the core a little bit like, oh this is what I'm doing now. Like, this is what feels in alignment with me. (laughs) Yeah. And so I want to firstly, totally validate what you're saying, because apply yourself like was never something that I had, that I even really thought about beyond like when I was starting, when, when it was, when it was starting, because I didn't even know what was happening when it was beginning, when, and I've told this story a little bit before, when I was writing my dissertation in Starbucks, And, you know, parents and their kids would come up to me and say, like, what are you working on? And I would say, oh, you know, my dissertation, they'd say, oh, so you've been through all these processes. And, you know, little did they know I'd been on admissions committees. I still am. 
And then they started knowing my schedule coming back to find me. Can you review my materials? Can you review my applications? Can you help me on my CV, my resume, my cover letters? I'm applying to this job. Can you help me like prepare for the interviews? And before I knew it, I wasn't getting any work done at Starbucks. I was seeing what became clients who became people who became clients. And then I started doing house calls. Fast forward, here we are having like this amazing impact, building an amazing community, but like totally happenstance, right? And so what I want you to do is share, if you're comfortable, about how that happenstance actually like happened (laughs) and how you felt through that process. Because for me, it was like, what? What is this? What's happening here? And it's grown with experience and, and over time. And it's become something different than what it than the way it started now with like a community of advancement and and practical and real advancement, acceptances, promotion, like the whole thing. But it was so serendipitous in the way that it has happened. So talk me through a bit of that process for you. Sure. Maybe I, I'll start from the very top. So again, when we were in high school, there's a lot of pressure to figure out what it is that you want to be when you grow up, as I mentioned. For me, I always kind of knew I wanted to help people and I always seemed to gravitate towards health. And so I just kind of thought med- medicine was where I was going to end up. Always very strong in all the subjects. So it wasn't even like, oh, I'm not good at this. So therefore I won't go in this area. So it was just it was just always something that I saw it, partly also because my parents are first generation immigrants from India. So as their as their only child, there was a lot of pressure that I put on myself to make all their dreams and wishes and sacrifices and struggles come true. And a lot of Indian people really like covet or or think highly of, of the medical profession. So part of it was like, what would other people think? Part of it was my own interest. So in any case, I went to undergrad. My first degree was in psychology with a minor in biology with that intention of somehow making like finding this as a strong foundation to go to medical school. I really also really love the mind and the body connection. Like I just think they're so it's so intertwined. And I was always fascinated about how our mind shapes our our destiny, our reality, our limiting beliefs, everything we do. So I was really super passionate about it and had the intention of going to medical school. But when you get to me- when you get to university, you realize you may have been a straight A student, but so is everyone else around you and everyone else. There's so many people that also want to do it. It's super competitive. And then I also just started thinking about, is this really what I want to do? Like, I also want to have a family one day. Do I want to be on call in the middle of the night? Do I want to go through 10 years of schooling? Now, hindsight is twenty twenty. I pretty much ended up doing 10 years of schooling. But anyways, and I, I happened to find out about the profession of occupational therapy. And that was something I never heard of before. It's another allied health profession. And I just, when I found out about it, I was like, this is the thing. This is my thing. It really takes a look at a person more broadly. You're not just a medical diagnosis that needs to be treated. It's like all of you. And I love the broad in the mind and the body and like all of the wellness. And it's about like working one on one to optimize people's goals and get them to where they want to be, what's important to them. Loved it. So I went to OT school and I did that at UFC. And I also, when I got in there, you know, again, swimming grades and class president and blah, blah, blah. Right. But Love the philosophy of it, but when the first day kind of just knew that this probably wasn't going to be my end game, like my end goal. And I, I don't know why it felt that way. I, I liked it, but, and I was just in school then. So I had decided, you know what, like I'm all in, I'm going to learn. I love, I love learning. So let's do this. And about 10 years later, I kind of got to that point again where I felt like, okay, I never really thought it was going to be where I was going to end up for life. And, and it's not for me at this, at this point. And I need to think about what's next. And so at this point, I was in my early 30s and, you know, finally starting to make it down into the sizable student debt that I'm sure so many of us can relate to. Left my, my you know, my first home, like my first condo in, in Toronto and moved back to my parents' basement. <laughs> and I don't think they thought that I would ever be back there. <laughs> I didn't think I would be back there. I have their... <laughs> especially in my like early 30s or like late 20s, to do my MBA. So I had never taken a business course in my life. It was never something I'd ever thought about. I just, it was when I was an OT 
I started managing my own practice and I realized I didn't know anything about managing my books or any of that kind of stuff. So I thought at the very least, it will help me become a better businesswoman in this capacity. But it could also open up all these other doors. And I just felt like I was ready for some doors to open. So did that. And after MBA school, I worked in kind of corporate America or corporate Canada, I guess you could say, and healthcare administration and worked for the government and really did some amazing work. At, for healthcare. And, and then I was restructured out of my role after 10 years of, of starting from the bottom and working my way up. Again, just amazing performance appraisals and just never saw it coming in that sense. And then decided to delve into entrepreneurship. So that's the long story short. And all of it was very, you know, I don't know, all over the place. But I would say that the dots connected for me when I or at least they, they feel very connected right now. And who knows, because this, you know, our journeys are always evolving where this will lead. I'm really curious to see what that would be like. But this brings in my love for working with people one-on-one and enabling their wellness and their growth. This brings together my desire to like support mindset shifts and like, you know, help overcome kind of limiting beliefs and really empowering people to live up to their highest and best. And this also incorporates kind of a lot of the strategy and the big transformation that I made as working in healthcare administration. So, and there's another element that this being a personal results and success coach is offering me now. And that is also allowing people to see this spiritual centeredness side of me. So it's not only just bringing together all the academic parts, but it's also bringing together more of my personality and more of my passions and more of the things that really anchor me as a person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you for sharing all of that. So it's not every day that you see an OT with an MBA. (laughs) Turn entrepreneur. (laughs) And so what I want to know, so many, actually, you know, I was just having a conversation with a client today about how when we don't see possibility for ourselves, it's really hard to sort of emulate what we, what we want when we don't have that model, when we don't have that example it's really hard to figure out the way forward. And it's hard enough anyway, even when you do have a model, even when, you know, there's that so-called traditional route, so many people find that, and this is one of the massive reasons that I talk about all this stuff here on the podcast, that so many people find the traditional route to not work for them. And so many people will say, and our guests have said, my clients have said, I have said that that traditional route didn't, didn't offer space for the kind of growth, the kind of impact that you want. It's a very straight shot to the end. But what if that doesn't work out? And or what if it what if it works out? But, you know, you you take a few more steps along the way. And so I think that this sort of like traditional route that people assume will happen or that, that they assume will unfold for them really is ingrained from the start. Like you said, you know, you thought medical school was the way to go. And I can relate. So did I. Right. And now life is so different than what I thought it could be back when I was 17 and I thought medical school was the way to go. I never imagined that this is what would have unfolded. And so when you're thinking back to those moments of transition, when you're thinking back to those moments of, okay, like I'm leaving this practice or I've been restructured out of this job, now what? How do you feel in like those moments? How did you feel in those moments of really intense transition, especially when you felt secure? Well, I can say that it's definitely a time of anxiety, fear of the unknown, right? It's very common to like, again, want that solid plan, right? And you've laid out this path, this traditional path that's very predictable. So when life fears you off course, like just even think about like if you're going, you're driving and you don't have your GPS or your phone guiding you and you're lost, (laughs) you don't feel very good, right? You feel very uncomfortable. So yeah, very much anxious and and fearful and a little bit excited too, potentially at the prospect. Like, but it's not for everybody. Change is not for everybody. It happens to everybody. And some people adjust more so to, to it than others. For me, I think personally, I've always loved change. But even, even for example, last year, being at an organization for 10 years and really like, you know, again, starting from the bottom, like going to school in your mid thirties to reinvent this part of your life and then starting at the very bottom career-wise and moving your way up and being groomed for continued growth. 
that was a real big change to my identity. And like overnight, I felt like my security blanket was taken away from me. Right. So definitely, definitely can be very unusual for sure. And so how did you make the decision that there was, how did you realize that there was more? It's always been a feeling for me. I don't know how to explain it. Like, again, when I went to OT school and I discovered it, I was like, yes, this over medical school, 100% hands down. And it was the philosophy that I fell in love with. But then when I was in it, like even as a student, I I didn't feel like it was, not that it wasn't marketed or like portrayed to be what it was, but it just felt different in my in my mind than what I thought it would be. And so, and then in the working world, working in the hospitals, for example, went to an OT at that point, The profession may have advanced a little bit in that sense, but you are always no T. Like you can't specialize in anything. You kind of cap out at your salary level. And I was surrounded by people that were like in their jobs for 15, 20 years. And honestly, that really just it 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 made me feel like I'd be dying a slow death. Like it just wasn't for me. Like I was like, so what's next? Like this is it. Like I've got so much time ahead of me. I'm in my mid 20s and I can't, I can't, like I just can't do this. Right. So and I always kind of knew that 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 it was a stepping stone. So I think that just made me lean into it a bit more. What I enjoyed about the 10 years that I worked was like I got so much exposure. I worked in different areas and different care settings, hospitals, community, worked with different patient populations. So there's no bad turn. There's no bad decision. It was all like very great and it was all good learning. But essentially when I was ready to move on, when I felt like I had saturated all the learning I could out of the, like, out of that experience, then I was leaving on my own terms. And it was yeah. then about like finding the next best step. And I still didn't know what to do at that point. Like, again, I was like, should I study for, the, should I do the GMAT now? Right. Like, I was like, okay, well, maybe it was medical school. And then again, just by happenstance, I was very close to somebody who was in the business world. And that was honestly, all my friends were in science and they were all professionals like in, in, in this industry. So. It was just an eye opener that there's a whole different world out there. And then that just got me thinking along those lines. And that's how I ended up there. Yeah. And then when I lost my my role about a year ago, a couple of years before that, and it was just like literally around the, the start of the pandemic, I think we were all, you know, we all had a lot of time on our hands to really go within and to really reflect. And people were making sourdough breads and, you know, doing all sorts of things. I was starting to write a book and then I thought, okay, this is great. But the things I'm talking about in terms of how to empower individuals, wouldn't it be great? Like writing a book takes a lot of work. Wouldn't it be great if I could coach people? Like I really miss that one-on-one that I had with OT. And so then I just kind of started leaning towards building that part. And it was just considered to be like a passion, a hobby, a pastime to help me serve people during the pandemic. And then, so I had already kind of started those building blocks. And so when that opportunity came, I almost felt like it was like a sign that I really needed to go in this direction. I just leaned heavier into it. Yeah. And I think that what I've seen, and and certainly I can relate, is that that feeling of wanting more, like knowing that there's more for you out there, not being 100% sure what that looks like, but knowing that, man, where I am right now is not the place that I'm finishing. And so I think that, you know, for our community members and our and our other listeners who may be thinking about being community members, if you have that thing inside of you that there's something telling you, this isn't the end, this isn't my last stop, there is more for me out there. I don't know what it looks like, but I know that it doesn't look like this. Then take this as your sign to really start thinking about, okay, what do you, what do you mean by that? What do you... And if you, you don't have the answers, that's, that's cool. Like you don't need to have all the answers. And I think that's something that you and I can agree on here is you don't need to have all the answers. The only thing that you need to do is actually commit to yourself that, okay, I'm going to do whatever it takes to make sure that I feel in alignment with my next best step, whatever that is, and with the choices that I'm making in order to identify what those next best steps are. The thought, the intentionality, the analysis the true analysis that has to happen. We're all used to, you know, doing analyses for school and for whatever. But what we really focus on is doing a real critical analysis thoughtfully, intentionally of our own lives, which is the most Absolutely. important kind of work that we can do. Absolutely. And that's that's where with my coaching, my the perspective that I take is 
I call myself a personal results and success coach, but really like what your results are, what how you define success is on you. But the, that's the whole point is really, does it align with you, right? Like, is it bringing you inner peace and joy and happiness? Are you truly lit up by your life? Because it's so easy to have all these successes on paper, on your resume, you know, on, you can get into the top schools. You can, you can have that career that everyone's like, oh my God, I wish I was, I wish I was in your role, in your position, you know? But if you don't feel, if you don't feel it inside, if it doesn't align with what you really want, it's just not worth it. Like there's so much more to life than, than what you produced. Yeah. And we see this all the time, right? We see this ha- all the time with professionals, people we may have even looked up to that, you know, when we tell them, you know, what we're planning on doing, they say, oh, you shouldn't do this. Right. And mm-hmm. this happens so often with lawyers. <laughs> this happens so often with lawyers. That, you know, I was in my PhD and I was, you know, going to law school the, the next year when I once I was done and I would tell like my lawyer friends or other, you know, lawyers in my you know network. And oh, yeah, I'm going to I'm starting at Osgood in September. And they'd be like, why? Like what? And I'm like, what do you, what, what do you mean? Why? Like you're a lawyer. And it was it was I found it really sort of like almost distressing that these people who you think are making these, you know, decisions for themselves and who are who look to be really successful are actually totally out of alignment with what they want to do and they haven't identified it. No, a lot of people prefer to be in the state of denial, I think, because it's so much easier, right? It's so much easier if you've invested your time, your effort and your energy on a particular path. It's so much easier to just keep going down that path. You're, you're good at it. You could do it in your sleep. It's giving you the stability and security that you think you need. It's much more courageous to go off that beaten path, maybe even create your own path, right? That yeah. you've never imagined. I certainly felt that way, you know, especially in my corporate world. Again, like I took, I felt like that was the biggest risk I've ever taken in my life is to go back to school, to leave an established profession where I was there for 10 years and I did a great job and I could have kept going, right? And I did that. I, I did exactly what I just said. I took another path. And then I went down that path and I was like, oh my God, seriously, Anita, like you, you still don't know what you want. Like this still isn't feeling great. Like what is it going to do? And I looked around and I had no clue. Like I looked at my boss, like they were all like grimming me for growth. I didn't want my boss's job. I didn't want my boss's boss's job. I didn't want any lateral jobs. And I thought, well, then why am I here? Like if I don't see any role in this huge organization that lights me up, if I don't see a path for me, what am I doing? But I'd been there for 10 years and that seems like such a huge investment as, of time, right? And I was like, well, where would I go? Like, what do I do, right? There was a sense of relief when things happened the way they did for me. I mean, it didn't feel good in the moment, but at the same time, I have to acknowledge that it gave me that opportunity to really step up and ask, like really get aligned with myself again. I do, but I just, I was afraid and I didn't have the next step. And to your point, like just, leaning into what that next step would look like involved a lot of courage. And, you know, having that security blanket taken away from you was was the way forward for me. Yeah. And I think that something that you said is so important. And we talk about this all the time here, which is that you can feel comfortable being comfortable. But what being comfortable looked like for me was feeling that that sense of comfort was that I had to like get out of that. I, I found that I was uncomfortable being comfortable. And I realized that the day that I walked in to one of my roles and I was like, oh my God, I could do this with my eyes closed. I am doing this with my eyes closed. And that's not the kind of life that I want. That's not it. Like I wanted more. And that I think something that is so important is to listen to the discomfort Mm -hmm. because discomfort is my best friend. Mine too. Yeah. If If we don't feel uncomfortable, then what are we doing in terms of, and I'm talking like the good kind of discomfort, the good kind of discomfort that indicates growth is here. And we have to have that courage to take that next step. Absolutely. I don't think that we'll ever be comfortable, right? Like there will always be an element that we can aspire to. Like, I don't think we should, like for myself, I'll take, you know, where I am now. It feels great. It feels like I'm all aligned. All my dots have connected. It's going to lead to somewhere else. It, this can't be it for me, right? I mean, I'm growing and evolving in this role and my ability to serve others. But and I'm not saying that one has to constantly change their educational path and get more degrees or go, you know, like I'm not saying that at all. But I'm saying that 
there we shouldn't be striving to ever be comfortable. And I think that yeah. if we really want to be big change agents, if we want to really big make big impact, if we're really driven, then we should continue to feel driven in our life, whatever that looks like. And if you've lost that drive, like I think there's seasons, like there's sometimes where you might want to slow down. Like I'm not saying burn yourself out or anything like that, right? But there are seasons. But if you feel like you're in a perpetual state of stagnation, then mm-hmm. I think you really Unless you like that, unless that's what you want for your life. But my guess is if they're, if you're, if you're tuning into this, to this podcast, if you're part of Adrian's community, like you're about advancing yourself, right? You're about applying yourself. So like, how can you apply yourself further? Right. Is just the question that you should always be asking, like how, what's next? Always be thinking what's next. Because advancement never ends. Never. Never ends. And that is so important. I was doing, I did a master class the other day, and there were tons of parents who showed up with their university age students, their kids. You know, as part of the master class, I said to the parent, like, this is for you too, just as much as it is for your kids. This is for you too, because we all are advancing. We're all advancing. We are all always needing to showcase ourselves and value what it is we bring to the table. And it's once we actually value ourselves, our experience, and are able to showcase ourselves that we then can take ourselves to that next level. And so we never stop advancing ever. And so I think that this, there are, and I've talked about this before, there are whispers and then screams about Mm -hmm. (laughs) what Mm -hmm. you should, you know, about, you know, what's guiding you and how you listen to those makes a really big difference. So for me, listening to those whispers, you know, when I was much younger, I couldn't identify them. I thought I was doing something wrong. And then as I got older, I realized these are, these are, these are signs. This is the universe telling me that, okay, like this is not the right thing for you. And then when I didn't listen, I ended up being like slapped across the face with something like, you know, my first year of undergrad, which I've talked about many times here and literally being in a position where I was like, okay, like I'm switching schools. Like that was a, that was a, I would call a slap in the face realization where like what I was doing was not working anymore. And there was something telling me, not just whispering, but like screaming at me, this is not for you. And so Absolutely. can you tell me a bit about, or maybe just share with me, you know, what, what those like whispers have, how you've identified those throughout your life? Because mm-hmm. I think so many students and so many of our community members are like, well, is this the right decision or is that the right decision? And so many times there are clues that we don't pick Mm -hmm. up on because number one, we're not expecting them. And number two, we're so busy with everything that's going on that we're like, okay, like I can't deal with this right now. And number three, we're just simply not sure of what we're looking for. And so what is your sense of all that? Oh, I love this question so much because Remember, I said that I also brought in a a really key element of myself into this version of me today, and that is my spiritual centeredness or Mm. intuitive ability. So I am an intuitive. And so when you were talking about the slap in your face, I would call that a tower moment. There's an actual card in the tarot that has like a burning building and people jumping out. It's not the best. So it looks like you meant to like read cards for me then. (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. I would we love should, to. Maybe this let's is... do that on the on the episode. That would be funny, wouldn't it? Sure. Yeah, and if you want, <laughs> I can go down and get them. But so for me, like one of the most recent tar moments, of course, is the restructure. To be honest, I felt like I said two years before I was kind of laying this groundwork for change. I felt like change was in the air. Couldn't explain why I would be feeling it. It started with this nudge to write a book. And I've never written a book in my life. I knew nothing about what I wanted to write about. I could not explain to you why this thought just kept coming in my head. And so I was like, this is a ridiculous idea. No, thank you. Like, and just kind of put it out. And again, to your point, those nudges just got, got a lot stronger. So they went from whispers to full-fledged screams. And I think when you are open to hearing your inner voice. Your inner voice is your intuition. We all have this skill. So we are always being guided. Like sometimes when we feel afraid, we think, oh, that means it's not safe for me. No, it it doesn't necessarily mean that there's different ways to tease apart if it's fear or if it's intuition. Because keep in mind, fear is there to keep us stable and secure. And so that means like maybe we're not growing, right? We just talked about the importance of growing. So we will feel a healthy dose of uncertainty and comfortableness with, with big changes. You've got to listen to that inner knowing, which is just saying, 
yes, this is what's right for me. Like what really kind of lights you up? What's in your highest and best good, right? Like, because fear will never want, or intuition will never want to keep you small. It'll always want you to expand because when you're living in alignment to your highest truth, to your purpose, to what truly lights you up, you are able to serve from that place of power, right? From that place of empowerment, you're able to be that example that like shows other people what's possible. And so why wouldn't the universe want you to shine in this way? Why wouldn't you want to shine in this way, right? Like, so, so many times we diminish our abilities because we're afraid or we want to be comfortable and we play it safe, we play it small, but really like playing big is, is our purpose. It, it, wow. We are all here and we're uniquely, we all have these unique talents and gifts and we find them. They don't find they don't find us like we find our talents and gifts. They're within us. And it's just all these detours that help guide us to what they are. Right. Yeah. So for me, it was that calling to write that book that just catapulted me into literally getting an invitation to join a writer's community from a major publishing house, which I'm still a part of today. And literally it was because I asked for help. I literally said, hey, universe, I keep getting this message and I had no idea why. I know nothing about this, but I'm open. If this is where I'm supposed to go, can you please just give me the tools and resources and the opportunities to get there? Like I, I have no clue. And literally I found an email in my inbox the minute I dotted that period on that sentence when I was writing in my journal, inviting me to this thing. And I was like, okay, sign, <laughs> noted. I'm going to do this. And then one thing led to another. Then it was like, oh, I want to coach. And like, I just never had these ideas or visions for myself, but it was once you stay open to that possibility and once you have that internal conversation with yourself or universe or spirit or higher power, whatever you want to call it, you know, you can, you will find your way. You will always find your way. You'll always be on your feet. So I just want to, I know that change can be really uncomfortable and growth can be uncomfortable and sometimes going back to school or, you know, applying yourself in a different way, showcasing yourself, like being seen. Uh -huh. That was a big change for me. And I still sometimes struggle with it. Like now, as an entrepreneur, you have to be on social media and you're doing dancing reels and all sorts of craziness, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my God, like I was always private profile. Don't find me, I'll find you. And now I'm like public, like come, come look at me, look at what I'm up to, you know? But if it's, if it's my highest and best way to serve people, to show people what's possible, if I believe in my vision, then, then I'm going to rise up to that occasion, even if it makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And I think that it's so, valuable to be having this conversation because, and I love what you said about, about our intuition and our purpose, not being to play small, wanting more, wanting to have that impact, to play bigger, make bigger moves. And something that came up with a client today was that not only, not a, was, was not only the fear of failure, but also the fear of success. Mm -hmm. And that's real. Like, okay, so what if it doesn't work out? That's like a diff, that's like one thing. But then what if it does? And I actually have a, an episode called, I think it's like the, the like five most important words that you can ask yourself for something. And it was, and we'll link to it in the show notes. And it was all about all of these questions that I was getting from clients, which was, okay, what if it doesn't work out? What if I embarrass myself? What if I fail? What if this, what if that? And my response is, but what if it does work out? And then that like opens the box to all of these brand new questions that we never thought of before, that we never had to think of before. And then that's another journey, right? Like, what if it does work out? Oh, well, now I'm afraid of what happens if it does work out. But really, what happens if it works out? And you keep making those next best step choices and you keep making the choice to commit to yourself and be accountable to yourself and what you want and the kind of work that you want to do that's in alignment with you. So don't think about all the like what ifs, except for what if it works out and let that guide you. Absolutely. Yeah. It's funny that you just mentioned you had an episode on it. I just released an episode on my own podcast last week on this very th same thing with all these scenarios and the what if opposites of the yes. negative scenario. So I totally believe in that. And it's, you know, you have to think what if like, it, and again, it's a natural fear. We've never We've never conditioned ourselves or given ourselves permission to to think big, right? It's our default auto-programmed response to to play small and just, you know, oh no, what if what if they see me? What if they make fun of me? What if I fail at this? What if yeah. I'm not good? What if it takes too much time? What if I'm better off now, right? 
we're, we're not conditioned to think about those limitless possibilities that are awaiting us. But no wonder we get so paralyzed and, and fearful and stuck when we're thinking those worst case scenarios. Like who would want to take that next step forward, right? Like there is nothing inviting about that <laughs> at all, right? <laughs> but when you think, oh my God, what if I can't fail? What if like I'm guaranteed success? What if, you know, something really amazing, then like, you no, know, doesn't that really make you feel more empowered and excited and confident to take that next step forward? Mm -hmm. Yes, I love that. I love that. And so I think that for our community members, for our listeners who are listening, this is such an important takeaway is that let's, of course, focus on what could be in the best way possible, right? And we do this through our, through our visualization exercises. We do this through our coaching. But if you've never worked with me one-on-one -on -one before or as part of our group programs, just start to think about this. What if, what if it does work out? And that will allow you to think about what is really possible for you. And by the way, anything is possible for you. Nothing is impossible. And the sky is totally the limit. Yes, it takes hard work. Yes, things take time. Yes, it takes strategy. Yes, it takes intentionality and thinking and reflection and analysis and all the rest of it. But like, isn't it worth it, right? The way I like to think of it is like, if it's your dream, it's yes. yours for a reason. Mm -hmm. Your dream, like not everyone has the same dream, right? Like I would never, like what I want for my life is very different from what maybe Adrian you want for your life and vice versa. If we're having this dream, if we have this vision, if there was like no obstacles or limitations holding us back from that, you know, we're having it for a reason. There's something calling us to that state. And maybe taking those baby steps to get there, you get completely redirected and you see a whole different version vision. Right. And that's okay too. Like yeah. you don't have to commit to a vision because you think it's that's your path. Like there's no that's such right. thing as that forever path or mm -hmm. that stable path. Like you have to stay open, really and truly. But once you start thinking big like that and like really trusting that those dreams are yours for a reason and whatever is meant for you will not be taken away from you like that. Right. That is yours. And even if it's very competitive, so like maybe you're trying to get into a particular program. Oh, my God. So competitive these days. I don't even know. Like, thank God you offer the services that you do. I think I wish I wish it was around when I was applying to all these schools. But, you know, just trust that if you're meant to follow that path, that you will get there. If it's really, truly your dream or your vision, then, you know, yeah, maybe you might have a roadblock or two or yeah, things might take a little bit longer. But like that path, if it's meant for you, there's nothing like there's more than enough for everybody. No matter how competitive it is out there, you will find your your footing and you'll be just fine. Yeah. And any opportunity that is waiting for you is actually waiting just for you and it will be right for you. Yeah. And so I think that that is so important. OK, I have to tell you, I am intrigued by your mention of cards because I have never in my life thought of this before. But why don't we be spontaneous? This is going to be a first on the Advancement Spot podcast. And so tell us a little bit about what you're about to do. Sure. This is so exciting. I can't believe this is the first. So I like I said, I'm an intuitive. So I do do tarot readings and oracle card readings. Essentially, these are just messages from your inner self, your highest self, your universe, whatever you want to believe in. But they're really just meant to serve as guides. So if you're on the right path, then that means that you'll get a, a card that you really resonate with. And if you don't, that's just an opportunity for your course correct, right? It just might kind of show you that you need to open yourself up to a different perspective or a different approach to get the results that you want. So we can do a, a reading. I have a couple of decks here that are more oracle card in nature. They're not tarot cards. So I think they're just easier to kind of interpret and they're just, it'll be so much fun. I'm really excited about those. Yeah. Folks. But we'll make this card reading not just for you, Adrian, but for all of your listeners. So this is a collective reading and it's a timeless reading, which basically means that whenever you stumble upon it, if it resonates with you, it's meant for you. And if it doesn't resonate with you, again, think about why it doesn't resonate with you. Is there a grain of salt that you need to kind of unpack a little bit? Or is it just not your message and it's okay to say, this is not my message and move on. So okay. I'm going to just shuffle the cards. And I have three different decks. So maybe I'll pick like one or two cards from each deck. Sure. Okay. So the first card I got was you're not for everyone. Embrace your weirdness. Face your true north. And what we're just talking about that this whole podcast episode is about leaning into 
what you want, who you are. Right. That's right. And recognizing that you're not for everyone. That your path may not be for everyone. Sometimes I think I know for myself, like a lot of my academic journey, at least I felt like I was doing it for somebody like to mm. make my parents proud or, you know, so. And I think that oh, so okay. many of our listeners can relate to that. Absolutely. So many. And so can I once, you know, when when yeah. I was in that situation, making yeah. those choices. Absolutely. And so I think that it's I think that message is actually really important that your journey may not be one that could be understood by somebody who's not you in your shoes, making your moves under your circumstances. But what counts is that your journey is in alignment with you. So I love I love that that's how it started. All right. You're going to love this one, too. This is one of my favorite cards. The Courageous Peony. Multifaceted, unique nature. Let yourself be seen. So we talked about taking courage, right? Like going off that beaten path is not necessarily some people choose to stay on that path that they don't really align with mm-hmm. because it's so safe and comfortable and secure and they don't want to take that courage, at, like courageous next step, right? So we also talked about visibility a little bit. So let yourself be seen as who you are, right? And again, I just dropped a card, which is for us. Can we that? <laughs> Got flexible. So this is another deck. But flexible is really just don't hold on too tightly to that outcome. It's okay to have a vision. It's okay to have a vision. It's great to have a vision. It's great to move towards something, but just be open, which is, again, another common theme of what we were talking about today. So this is a really resonant reading with, and to me, when I, when these kind of things happen, it just shows alignment. Like it just shows that like, yeah, we were talking about the right things. Yeah. Yeah. Another card that I got was why. And this mm. this girl is picking up a book. So that's interesting, too, from like an academic perspective, right? But just think about why you're doing what you're doing. What is your common? What do you value? What do you want? Right. Like, how are you anchoring and grounding your life, your actions, you know, the things that you're learning? Just think about your why. Yeah. And we'll pick two more messages. This is another deck that is one of my favorites. This is called, I can't remember, but something about like manifestation with the mermaids. It's really dreamy okay oh oops got friendship make a date for play with one of your friends i think this is important too i mean we didn't touch on this but what i think i hope that people got from this is when you're staying open to the process it's really you're staying in this energy of expansion and friendships like good comforting Cozy friendships are expansive, right? They help inspire you to do your best. Those people lift you up, those people, you know, so, and they also just let you have fun and fun is a really key energy. And I know that as a high achieving, goal oriented, driven people that like are probably tuning in, I think sometimes we could embrace and inject a little bit more fun into our lives. So, (laughs) (laughs) okay, last message. Nice. Let yourself receive. Ooh. This is such a powerful one. Allow others to give you loving care, receive without guilt or apologies. Again, I think as people that are wanting a lot, that are very driven, that are very goal oriented, it's often a lot of pushing, a lot of pushing energy, right? Like you're doing all the things versus receiving, receiving the inspiration, receiving the ideas, receiving compliments, receiving, you know, that kind of thing. So receiving help, even when it comes to doing things like maybe applying to really competitive schools or changing visions. Like I I really strongly believe that we're not meant to work in isolation with one another. Like we're supposed to be together. We're supposed to support and uplift each other. So let yourself receive whatever that may look like. Yes. And we are all about that in the Apply Yourself community. We are all about community community and being there with each other for each other and so i love that i love that thank you for doing that that collective reading that was so much fun and if this resonated with you and you're listening to this if that if any of this is resonating with you send me a dm and let me know i would love to hear about what you think about this this is the first time we're doing this on the podcast i think it's so much fun i just have one final question for you Sure. One final question. What is some advice that you would give your younger self? Oh, honestly, it's to not beat yourself up over having needing to have all the answers. I just I love a path. I love structure, rigidity. I am not flexible. I wanted to be, you know what I mean? Like I just wanted to do everything perfectly and not screw it up. And so like, again, got into OT school. That was great. But then what I pivoted 
part of me did feel like, oh, I didn't make the right decision. Even when my restructure happened, felt a little bit like it was my fault. And it was honestly just a business decision. But I was like, what are my parents, are my parents going to think that I failed? You know, all that kind of stuff. So just, just don't be so hard on yourself. Like there is always the next step will reveal itself. You don't need to know everything right now. You just need to try your best. Just show up and try your best and lean into what really, what you want and you won't go wrong. Yeah, thank you. I love that. I love that. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm so glad that we got to do this and that you were willing to be spontaneous with the card reading. I love it. (laughs) So we're just crazy like that. (laughs) Thank you, Adrian. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to have you and thank you for tuning in today and we will see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Advancement Spot podcast. If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at applyyourselfglobal and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode, leave this episode a review, and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.